Assalamualaikum and welcome back to my video presentation on problem-based learning. Self-directed learning is the second stage of the PBR cycle. Uh, it is uh, crucially important in uh, PBR learning cycle. Uh, it is the core activity for problem investigation and uh, knowledge possession. It will strengthen uh, the inquiry or diagnostic uh, process. Self-directed learning was uh, prevalent since the emergence of the andragogical movement in the 70s. Novels uh, define self-directed learning as uh, the process in which individuals uh, take the initiative uh, with or without the help of others in diagnosing their learning needs, uh, formulating learning goals, identifying human and material resources uh, for learning, choosing and implementing learning strategies and evaluating learning outcomes. The term self-directed learning or SDL was also linked to many other terms uh, such as flexible learning and experiential learning. In these uh, general concepts, uh, the self-directed learning was accredited as early as to 1905 to Hayward and 1956 to uh, do his work. Carl Rogers, the father of uh, client-centered counseling, is associated with expanding this approach into a general theory of education. This term was also associated with the work of Piaget until finally picked up by Malcolm Knowles through the andragogical movement in the 1970s. Uh, in self-directed learning, the paradigm had shifted away from teaching to an emphasis on learning and encouraged power to be moved from the teacher to the student. The view changed from the knowledge that transmitted from a teacher to students to the knowledge constructed by students and that the teacher is a facilitator of learning rather than a presenter of uh, information. In a self-directed learning, uh, students do not only choose what to study but how and why that, that topic might be an interesting one to study. Harden and Crosby describe uh, self-directed learning as focusing on the student's learning and what students do to achieve this rather than what the teacher does. Uh, this definition uh, emphasizes uh, the concept of a uh, student doing. Self-directed learning includes the following tenets. One, the reliance on active rather than passive learning. Two, an emphasis on deep learning and understanding. Three, increased responsibility and accountability on the part of the student. Four, an increased sense of autonomy in the learner. 5. An interdependence between uh, teacher and learner. 6. A mutual uh, respect within the learner-teacher relationship. And 7. Uh, a reflexive approach to teaching and learning process on the part of both uh, teacher and learner. Gibbs uh, observed that uh, self-directed learning and uh, student-centered learning emphasize uh, 1. Learner activity rather than passivity. Two, a student's experience on uh, the course outside the, the institution and prior to the course. Three, a process and competence rather than content. Four, the key decisions about learning are made by the student through negotiation with the teacher. Brandis and Genis present the main principle of a self-directed learning and a student-centered learning as one, the learner has full responsibility uh, for their learning. Two, uh, involvement and participation are necessary for learning. Three, the relationship between learner is more equal, promoting growth and development. Four, the teacher becomes a facilitator and a resource person. Five, the learner experiences a confluence in his education, including effective and cognitive domains that flow together. And uh, six, uh, the learner sees uh, themselves uh, uh, differently as a result of uh, the learning experience. In summary, the concept of self-directed learning uh, could be viewed from uh, three different perspectives. One, uh, the concept of the student's choice in their education. Two, the being about the student doing more than the lecturer or teacher, active versus passive learning. Three, a broader, a broader definition which includes uh, both the, uh, of these concepts but in addition uh, describes the shift in the power relationship between the student and uh, the teacher. In a much broader concept and terms, uh, self-directed learning could be understood not only from uh, an educational learning perspective but also the teaching at the workplace. 
Daniel Tobin uh, uh, proposed uh, independent uh, self-directed learning, uh, which according to him, uh, in the context of the workplace, is uh, learning that takes place uh, apart from other people, apart from formal organized training for programs, uh, no instructors, no classmates, uh, no uh, designated day and time to show up for training. It's just you and your learning materials. The only truly independent learning is that uh, which comes uh, from uh, experimentation and discovery. Further, according to Tobin, uh, self-directed learning implies that you are deciding for yourself what you will learn and how you will learn it. You are directing your own learning activities. You are in charge. No one tells you what you must learn or decide which method is the best one for you to use. No one dictates when and where you must be in the class. Uh, no one decides uh, what is important for you to learn or what is not important. According to Tobin, uh, there are four types of learning at the workplace which, uh, according to him, will describe how independent and self-directed learning operate in the corporate world. He explains uh, these four types of learning uh, into four quadrants. Uh, quadrant 1, uh, dependent and self-directed learning. Quadrant 2, dependent and other directed learning. Quadrant 3, independent and other directed learning. And Quadrant 4, independent and self-directed learning. Quadrant 1, dependent and self-directed learning. In this quadrant, learning topics are selected by the employee, but the employee is dependent on the company or another source determining learning methods, materials, and schedules. Quadrant 2, dependent and other directed learning. In this quadrant, learning topics, methods, materials, and schedules selected by the company which also provides instruction. The employee is tested uh, in the, uh, at the end of the program to prove mastery of the learning content. Quadrant three, uh, independent and other directed learning. In this quadrant, uh, learning topics, methods and materials uh, selected by the company. Uh, an employee may have some choice as to methods and uh, schedule, but must prove mastery of the learning content. Quadrant 4, independent and self-directed learning. In this quadrant, learning topics, uh, methods, materials, and a schedule selected by the employee. The employee is uh, solely responsible for what is learned. Independent and self-directed learning in quadrant 4 should be the best practice for anyone who would like to improve the work, uh, workplace skills free from any control system. Entrepreneurs and leaders are especially from this type of learners. Entrepreneurs are a group of people who seek business opportunities based on their own future goals, needs, and interests. Learning is out there in the field. Certificates and credentials uh, will not be very helpful when face the complex business problems and challenges. Uh, the same thing goes to leaders. Uh, they are a group of people who venture into uh, no man's land and learn. Uh, previous learning and prior knowledge uh, will never be sufficient for them to lead. Some even have to learn from scratch. Leading people means learning about the, the people, developing the strategies to get them into uh, our leadership and to lead them uh, towards the shared vision. It is as complex as the people themselves. More followers mean uh, more complexities. Observation on PBM models discussed by Linda Wee uh, indicates that uh, self-directed learning is the second most important stage in the PBL cycle. The Temasek Polytechnic of uh, Singapore uh, PBL model allocated two stages in its uh, seven uh, PBL stages model, which is in uh, stage uh, five and stage six. In uh, stage five, uh, self-directed learning involves the process of seeking and summarizing relevant information in uh, stage six. Uh, synthesis and application involve the process of uh, one, evaluating learning resources for credibility and validity. Uh, two, conducting peer uh, sharing of information. Uh, three, synthesizing and uh, apply relevant uh, knowledge to the problem. Four, developing more learning uh, issues if necessary. And five, discussing, uh, developing and justifying the solution and explanation. The Republic Polytechnic of Singapore PBL model allocated uh, three main activities in its uh, seven PBL activities model. Uh, which is uh, in activity 4, uh, 5, and uh, 6. Uh, activity 4, Integrate Learning. The facilitator helps the student to concentrate on questions that are particularly important and to formulate learning objectives. Students distribute the tasks and conduct uh, research or discussions. This activity will also uh, foster cooperation. 
Activity 5, sharing and reasoning. Uh, students uh, share new learning by presenting it to their peers and by questioning one another. This activity promotes the active use of uh, what has been learned and identifies, uh, identifies the students as strengths and weaknesses. And Activity 6, knowledge application and new understanding. New knowledge and understanding are applied to the problem as uh, students uh, consider uh, whether their uh, earlier conjectures uh, can be refined and what further information will be necessary. Definitive resolution uh, of uh, the problem may not be necessary. Other institutions had also considered uh, self-directed learning as one of the most important learning steps in PBL cycle. The PBL cycle at the School of Medicine at Southern Illinois University uh, United States allocated uh, six steps of self-directed learning. One, commit to the most probable outcome. Two, identify resources. Three, uh, conduct self-direct uh, learning. Four, critique resource. Uh, five, reassess problem based on an acquisition of new knowledge. And six, solve the problem. The self-directed learning in the PBR cycle at McMaster University, Canada in chemical engineering involves the processes of uh, 1. Conducting self-directed learning independently, 2. Sharing new knowledge with uh, group members and 3. Applying knowledge to solve a problem. The self-directed learning in uh, the PBR cycle at the Queensland University of Technology, uh, Australia in information technology uh, involves uh, three steps. 1. Researching the learning objectives conduct an independent study, three, reporting, uh, two, uh, reporting back, synthesize and test acquired information, and three, analyzing additional issues. Noel's concept of uh, self-directed learning, uh, however, was uh, criticized as outdated. Hayes and Kenyon argued that Noel's concept of self-directed learning only providing a linear approach to learning commonly found in single-loop learning. It may be suitable for the third uh, industrial revolution age that characterized in uh, 1970s technological advancement where information technology system automated uh, the production lines in industry. We are now at the end of the fourth industrial revolution age where the Internet of Things, IoT and cloud technology automated industrial as well as our complex tasks. Our gadgets are hard evidence showing us that everything had already changed and continuously changing. With the emergence of more complex technologies such as artificial intelligence technology, we are moving uh, very fast uh, towards the fifth industrial revolution age. This requires us uh, to improve our learning skills accordingly. Hayes and Kenyon uh, propose the changing from self-directed learning that based on the andragogical concept of learning uh, to self-determined learning which is based on a theotagogical learning concept. They argue that self-determined learning goes beyond problem solving. It is a double-loop learning uh, that involves uh, the challenging of our theories in use, our values and our assumptions rather than simply reacting to problems uh, with strategies found in single-loop learning. I will be sharing the concept of self-determined learning and uh, its heterological foundation in the next video. Till then, thank you very much uh, for your time and kind attention uh, to my uh, presentation. And viewers who are new here, please subscribe to my channel so you will get more notification on my upcoming videos. And uh, don't forget to like and share this uh, video. Uh, if you have uh, something to share, please leave the comment below. Have a great day. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.